Pacific North Bubble Bubble. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Pacific Northwest Family Channel. I'm Spiky Lee Farnsworth, as you know by now. And uh, this is another episode in the continuing uh, series of the... I, I'll call it the CRX build, because that's what it is. Uh, this disclaimer is mainly to just kind of explain that this video is all over the place. It is, in fact, videotaped and uh, displayed in this video in chronological order. So I wanted to keep that authentic because that's the way it happened. It was, it was a bit of a process to get to where we're at now and I wanted to kind of show the steps along the way. So I think that this video, if nothing else, kind of accomplishes that. I apologize in advance if you, you don't like videos full of chaos because this one's kind of chaotic. It's kind of, it jumps back and forth between projects. This is exactly how I worked on them. The, the process for each, right? Um, what else do I want to say? Yeah, so in this video, we start off working on the distributor. Then we work on the parcel shelf or like cargo area, cargo cover, whatever you like to call that. Then we work on the distributor again. Then we work on the brakes. I told you, random. Valve cover, rear parcel shelf, chest repair, cam seal, VTEC solenoid. And I think that's about it in this video. But I just wanted to give you guys an update on kind of what, what I've been doing and uh, the, uh, the Rex has been kind of um, out of the mix. I mean, I've been kind of out of the mix. I haven't been posting any videos and uh, apologies in advance for the length of the video. But at, on the other hand, I mean, I don't put out very many videos, so I figure why not put out some longer videos? Let me know what you guys like in the comments. Let me know what you'd like to see. Where would you like the build to go? What do you think would be a good idea? What should I do with the car? Let me know. I like feedback. It's uh, it's always welcome because I, I don't claim to be an individual that has all the answers. I'm not a mechanic. Uh, I'm not uh, I'm not an expert in any of this. You are seeing me learn things in real time uh, for the most part. Apologies for not uh, filming all of the uh, my actual doing processes, just mainly the results in this film. I'll probably do that more of that later on. But right now, this it, I'm just treating it as more of a, a documentation, uh, a, a timeline of the CRX and what's what's going on with it, what I'm doing to it, and, and the progression of it. You know, uh, I guess I just want to document that. And hopefully, you guys enjoy this type of material. And again, if you want to see something specific in the future or have any questions, you know, always hit me up in the comments. I always try to, to answer those. And uh, yeah, so. I'll probably interrupt this video a few more times just to kind of explain everything because I feel like there are some things that need explaining. So, sorry. Or, right on. High five for all the uh, stuff you're about to see and uh, hopefully you learned something from this as I did. And, uh, and again, enjoy. Well, the saga continues. Today, I'm going to try my hand at uh, replacing a distributor on this JDM B16 in my CRX. Yeah, so remove the intake. I discovered he didn't put this together with zip ties. This is actually a collar that he cut and put a zip tie around the pipe so that when it's in here, it doesn't short out against this. So that's what that was for. So a little less janky than I thought, but still janky. Uh, speaking of janky, this distributor, I just checked the timing. It seems to be right on which is good to his credit. I thought initially that timing belt might have jumped a tooth because it wasn't running right. And every time it would get warm, it wouldn't start. You know, it just had, it was had a lot of the symptoms there would have had, you know, if, if you had jumped a tooth. Kind of sorted itself out. I suspect this thing hasn't really been driven as much, you know, before I owned it and was kind of sitting for a while. So these things kind of behave a little bit better when, when they're being driven. But now that we're here about to, do, to uh, change the distributor, I discovered this distributor has only one bolt <laughs> holding it in. The, the one down here, nope. It's just gone, and and then the other one is gone as well, but it, the, the one over here is broke. It's just broke off. And it decided to rain on me, and I dumped a full latte in the back, so this car should smell really awesome here in uh, the, the coming weeks, like a sour milk vanilla latte. So uh, yeah, that'll be pleasant. I'm gonna have to clean the shit out of that. Anyway, uh, I'll keep you posted how this goes. Well, I found the culprit. This is why the tack isn't working. Their little job here with their monster tack tying in. And then the wire's corroded and broken. These are brittle as hell. Gonna have to replace some plugs, it appears. Yeah, so that'll be fun. Anyway, it's off for now. Right, so the following clip is uh, just a 
uh, uh, the uh, final is kind of more the final um, for now um, results of uh, the cleanup process and the restoration of the parcel shelf. Um, basically, I, I dumped a full coffee on there. I just got it and it was like two minutes old and I, I think it took a sip, like one itty bitty sip out of it and it flipped 180 degrees right on to the parcel shelf. What I call the parcel shelf. It's like that little chest thing that sits behind the front seats. <clears throat> and anyway, uh, it was dry. It was like a dry fiber board and it was like a sponge. It soaked everything up. It just <clears throat> sucked it right up. So, you know, I, it was a 24 ounce latte, so it um, had milk in it. Imagine what that would smell like, you know, if I would have just left things uh, to their own devices. So I had to clean that up. Um, and the only way to do that properly was to remove the carpet and let it dry out. And in the, in the process, I discovered that it was really weak. Um, it was just a really brittle, um, brittle is not really the right word, but it was soft and mushy and it was just like a really flimsy, flimsy is, is the word, is a good word. Uh, so basically what I did was first I bleached it. I soaked it in bleach really thoroughly just to uh, make sure and kill any bacteria and, and smells because um, I don't know if you ever smelled rotten milk. That's not a good smell. So we wanted to take care of that. Um, and then after that, I, uh, I treated it with fiberglass resin for two reasons. One, I wanted to give it strength uh, so it wasn't so flimsy because I might want to stack some stuff on top of it as is the intent of that space because um, there's not that much space in a CRX, as you know. Uh, so yeah, so that was the intent, to give it some strength so I can uh, put some stuff on top of it, but also to kind of, for lack of a better way to put it, weatherproof it, I guess, or coffee-proof it, or whatever-proof it, right? Um, Fiberglass resin is great for that. It helps seal things so that you it, it can't be penetrated and compromised in horrible ways. So that was the second reason. Um, and what you're seeing in the video is just kind of me kind of wrapping it up, you know, after I've already done everything. Now, it's still not done, that, that little chest thing behind the seats. I'm actually still working on it. I don't know when that's going to be done or, you know, I'm working on it here and there, just a little little bits and pieces here and there. There are some things I wanted to show you about it, uh, more to come, but in this video, that's what this is right after this clip here. Okay. Okay, in this clip, I just wanna address the fact that uh, we're gonna be working on the parcel shelf, I call it, or the cargo cover for the CRX. As you know, it has that problem that they all do where the carpet's coming up and literally seems to be the only thing that held this piece together. Got some of these piano hinges Amazon they're 18 inches so they're slightly too big because you've got some brackets underneath here that are slightly too big to to accommodate the piano hinges I probably could have found the exact right size if I really looked really hard enough but I just knew I wanted them to be black so they kind of blend in as you can see they're just that much too long so I'm going to trim a little bit off each one so that you know they can be centered then we're going to use some spray adhesive on the carpet and just kind of uh, put that back down now also since this carpet's from 1991 it's got a whole bunch of lights and stuff on it so i got a lint remover as well you'll also note that probably earlier in this video what what happened was we had some research to do regarding a uh, bolt and whatnot as i was saying i was doing some research because earlier in the video I discovered that my distributor has one bolt just one kicking it i don't even know how the damn car runs i'm actually uh pretty proud of that car <laughs> i'm like man the little engine that could you know all this drama that we've been through with that car but uh it does run still and and pretty good too i checked the timing and it was right on despite only having one bolt in there and the, the distributor that's in there i'll show you later in the video has two uh, uh, brackets that actually hold the bolts and hold the distributor on or i think look like they're busted off and the whole thing is just kind of cocked and just i suspect that's also where uh, part of my uh, oil leak is coming from anyway i went to the junkyard because i couldn't find through all my research i was getting different answers on what size bolt i needed it's 12 millimeter 25 millimeter this way 
thread pitch 1.25, but it's an M8 bolt. It is not an M10 from what uh, I understand. I have my little tool over here in my toolbox here that kind of helps me understand what type of bolt I'm working with. And it's, uh, it's, it's saying it's an M8 1.25, just in case you were curious, because if you go out on the internet and go into the forums, a lot of people are saying M10. That's just simply not true from from what I understand. And I pulled these from some different cars, a couple different era Accords. I think a CB7. Oh, what are they? I think the later generation, the, the 2000s was like CG something, right? Anyway, I could be wrong about that. But either way, I, I, I just got several of them and they all seem to be uh, the same size and thread pitch across the board, depend, not, notwithstanding, you know, what, what model they're from. So that's good news, right? In case you were wondering, we'll see if this actually works and fits in, into my cylinder head there. When I go to do the alternator install, alternator, <laughs> distributor install. So yeah, we'll see. I, got, I still got to clean them up. They were ob obviously really nasty and greasy and stuff. So I, I had them set in degreaser. I'm going to clean them up a bit with the Dremel and a, a wire brush and just kind of bring them back to their, uh, you know, kind of make them look uh, at least somewhat brand new when I uh, go to put the distributor in. Now you only need three bolts. I grabbed four just because I was there and they're free. Apparently, if you go to the pick and pull here in Tacoma, Lakewood, the uh, bolts are free, if you didn't know. Anyway, I'll catch up with you later after I'm done with this. We're also working on the back partial shelf. I'll, I'll explain that in the next clip. Okay, so back for just a minute. As as I said, I just cut uh, about one and a half of these little joints off the piano hinge. And as you can see now, both of them line up perfectly between these two brackets. So that's what I'm going to use. And all I did was I just used a Dremel with the little cutoff wheel here. All right, we'll catch up in a minute. Okay, so as you can see, I've now split this into two pieces. I didn't want to do it. I did not want to cut this carpet, but I kind of had to because what I'm going to be using is, uh, I think I'm going to be using these medium-sized rivets. I'm going to go in here with the head of the rivet and then tuck the carpet back over so that you can't see it because I don't want any of the hardware exposed. So that was my plan, and I didn't see an easy way I could do that and have a smooth surface without splitting the carpet. So it didn't cut very nicely. <laughs> it's kind of had a lot of fuzz and stuff and I just kind of threw that over there and it's also very stuck on there it's kind of impressive after 31 years but uh yeah anyways so my next plan is I'm just going to place the hinge itself on here right and mark all the holes with a sharpie and then drill them out and then get it ready for rivets and then I'll rivet one side and then I'll do the other side kind of in the same fashion and then finally we'll use some spray adhesive to tuck that carpet back over. And then the last step, I plan on using that lint shaver to get, get this carpet looking a little bit more uniform. Okay guys, back again for just a second. The pop riveting went very well. I like the way it turned out all the way down. It's gonna be nice and flush. As you can see, I've got my can of spray adhesive here. This is what brand I'm using. We're just gonna tuck that back down. And the tape, of course, is so I don't get the spray adhesive on the top. I'll let you know how it turns out. Okay guys, I've been working on this, and as you know, if you're watching this video, I just kind of had to recondition this because I spilled a 24 ounce latte on it, and it was, uh, it's like this fiber board that just kind of was really dry from, I don't know, existing for 30 years, but anyway, it, uh, basically sucked up that whole coffee, unfortunately, so I had to let that shit dry out. Then I treated it with fiberglass resin to kind of harden it up because it was kind of bowing. The whole thing has kind of just lost its integrity, especially after somebody cut the uh, rear, I call this like the parcel shelf, or it's like a little chest, basically right behind the two driver's seat, or the two seats, um, where in Japan they get a rear seat option, which is non-functional too. But anyway, so what I've done is I've taken off the carpet and then I did that treatment with the fiberglass resin on both sides to kind of firm it up. And then I'm just reinstalling the factory carpet. Now the factory carpet has seen better days as well. Evidence of smoker, previous owner here. It looks like a cigarette burn, unfortunately. But just I uh, wanted to show you the contrast here, the stark contrast between uh, just treating this carpet with my handy dandy little lint shaver here and not it makes a huge difference so my best efforts to try and um try and save this original carpet anyway so uh yeah so hopefully you're enjoying this guys it's tedious work but i really think that it's little touches like this that make all the difference when you finally go to present your car when you go to i don't know just when you're out in public, when anybody sees it, they're going to notice, man, that carpet looks real clean. I can't believe it's in such good condition. Things like that. It goes a long way. So it's worth the effort. 
So yeah, again, hopefully you're enjoying this as much as I am, which is, oh man, 10 out of 10 right now. I'm just loving it. But yeah, this is well worth the 13 bucks. Amazon, I think it was like 13 bucks. I'll put a link in the description. But yeah, it makes a huge difference. All right. In this next video, I, or clip, I uh, am dealing with the distributor again. This is part two. This is uh, where I have a little bit more success now. Um, you may be wondering why <laughs> I had to revisit this. Sometimes you get into a project and you realize, you know what? I don't have all the tools and or knowledge maybe um, to complete a task. You, you kind of know your limitations and you want to work smarter, uh, not harder. You want to make sure that uh, uh, you do the job right. It's important if, if you value um, what you're working on and you want it to, uh, to, you want the results to be, you know. So that's what I did. That's why I stopped and I had to revisit it. I didn't have a lot of the tools that I needed, uh, you know, bolt extractors, hammer, chisel, that sort of thing. I had to acquire those things and uh, revisit it. Meanwhile, the car ran good, even though uh, I only had one bolt in the distributor and it was just kind of hanging on there. I'm really surprised by that. I'm still surprised by that. It's amazing. Um, and also, I, it's mind boggling that someone would put it together like that. Um, it's shameful, really, uh, but that's what happened. And anyway, um, again, you know, just documentation, letting you guys know. Again, I'm not a mechanic. I'm not an expert. I'm really just learning all this stuff for the first time, believe it or not. Um, and I'm not a spring chicken. I'm not a youngin, but just, you know, goes to show that you're never too old to uh, learn, you know. You, it's good to learn things, and hopefully you get something from this video once again. I'm gonna interrupt this video a few thousand more times to explain it um, and where it's going so it's not just a bunch of clips and you're like, ah, what is this? All right, next clip. Okay, guys, finally got it off. Here's the one that was on the car. Looked up the part number. This is actually for an Integra. And this was sawed off, this third mount here, because it's not like the JDM mount, which is basically these two are straight up and down. So yeah, see my nice creative little Molex connector because my harness is 30 years old and literally disintegrating. We'll talk more about that later. But through all the techniques and everything that I've been researching on how to get a stubborn bolt off, namely this one right here, apparently it's a thing that these JDM uh, bolts for the distributor, they, they're really common to strip out. And I used a 12 point box end on it, you know, didn't work. It stripped out. And then I got this Thinkwork uh, bolt extractor off Amazon. This this actually is what broke it loose. I actually hammered it on, but there's not enough space really in, in for that thing on there. Then what finally worked was the old, uh, what the old timers use, which is a three pound hammer, like a little mini sledge and a, and a chisel. And believe it or not, that is the most effective way. That's what really got the bolt off for me. So there's that. But yeah, in the process of putting the new one on, cleaning things up here, it was really nasty. And I think just because it had that top bolt there, it was leaking out of the bottom. As you can see, it's a damn mess under here. I don't think that's all though. I think it's also the cam seal and the VTEC solenoid seals, which I've got new ones and I plan on doing that as well as refinishing the valve cover. Okay guys, this is my first time again uh, doing this, but on these distributors, you'll notice there's little lines here, and you pay attention to which, uh, the orientation of this on the old one as you pull it out from what I gather, right? So you don't get it 180 degrees off. I put this one in the same orientation. I put some NACs on the bolts. Now I got these bolts from the junkyard because I did some research again. It seems that the research I did was all wrong. Nobody had the right answer, for, unfortunately. What size bolts and the thread pitch that you needed, which is an M8, an M8, Thread pitch 1.25, 25 millimeters long, and it's a 12 millimeter socket that fits that. Anyway, I uh, finally got it all kind of bolted up hand tight, and I made a new connector for this thing because mine disintegrated. It's old and brittle, and I pretty much just need a new engine harness. Um, I'm thinking about doing that in the future, but uh, yeah, so I, I clipped that bad boy off of there and made it on Molex just so it's serviceable and I can take it off if I need to. Now I'm going to do the timing now. A lot of people, I couldn't really find a video on YouTube that discusses this, 
where you can find your service port so you can, you know, the little uh, deal you short out to uh, make sure the ECU is not fighting you. And mine is right here in the kick panel. I don't know if you can see that. It's a little blue connector. You just short that out or, or, or you know, complete the circuit there. And it uh, puts it in service mode so you're not fighting the ECU to do the timing. So that's that's what's next. That's what I'm going to do. And we'll go from there. This this is my first time, so it's kind of I'm kind of like, whoa, you know. But anyway. We're actually dealing with the brakes. And uh, I don't know why I did that with the quotes, but that's exactly what we were dealing with was the brakes. Um, so there were a couple of things going on. Um, a screw had coming out of, uh, come out of one of the dust shields and it lodged itself in the inside of the rotor and was rubbing itself raw on the dust shield and it was making a horrible sound, got a little kss -kss 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 sound. And so I had to get to the bottom of that and find out first of all what was going on. But um, I had also uh, purchased a, a, a new master cylinder and I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but in like an older car or a car that has some worn out brakes or a brake system, but when you're at a stoplight and you know you got the brake pedal pressed down and you're stopped, but then you start moving again <laughs> slightly or the brake pedal kind of sinks to the floor, well, it's more than likely a bad master cylinder. I've come to find out through my research online, YouTube, Google, and those sorts of things. And uh, I was like, well, new one's like 45 bucks. Why don't I get one and try my hand at changing it? And uh, it turns out it wasn't even that bad. As a matter of fact, I would go as far as to say working on the brakes on this car were, um, it was a, a fun experience, I would say. Um, it was actually fun. It was so easy. Um, that said, I did, uh, I did buy a uh, vacuum uh, bleeder, brake bleeder tool. Um, and I just want to note that no matter what I did, um, either using the factory attachment from it, using the hose itself, along with some uh, grease and zip ties to make sure I got the connection as tight as I possibly could, I suspect it, it had a leak. Um, and it was introducing air bubbles into the, to the line, giving me kind of like false readings, uh, basically, uh, that there was still air in the lines because uh, after which, um, you know, going through that whole process, um, I decided that we needed to bleed them again, you know, just to see. So I did it the old fashioned way with the tube hooked up and doing it that way where you just pump the brake, you know, a few times, pump and hold, and then you crack the bleeder, uh, whatever you want to call it, the bleeder valve there. Um, it worked fine. And there weren't any bubbles like I, like there were, but I mean, we cleared them out pretty quickly. So uh, I'd say save your money on the vacuum bleeder tool. Uh, it's not even necessary. Do it the other way where you'll see, I think Eric, the car guy does it where he's got just a, a little one liter bottle and he sticks the tube in there. And when the bubbles stop, that's when you're good. I would say that's a better system than spending the $25 or whatever it is on a brake bleeder. It's unless you found a way to really seal that off, probably not worth the money, but I just wanted to make sh mention that and, um, let you know how it was. But yeah, it was, uh, we, we bled the brakes twice and changed the master cylinder. So, I mean, it's, that's all over YouTube too. So I didn't show a lot of us actually doing it. I just kind of showed the aftermath, the results. And the, result, the results are stellar. It's amazing what a new distributor and a new uh, master cylinder and just parts like that, what they can do for an engine bay, making it uh, from uh, looking old and tired to uh, just kind of breathing new life into the car. And I'm really happy with that. And I think I mentioned that in the video. So hopefully I'm not too long-winded on these interruptions, but um, what can I say? I'm long-winded. Okay, day two, another episode in Spiky Lee Farnsworth the Third's first time adventures. We're doing uh, <clears throat> some brake stuff. And one of the things that happened recently was this little dust shield came loose because there was only one screw right back here. I was holding it on and these, this was just kind of flopping around. So it was making a horrible like kss, 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 sound on the, on the uh, back of the wheel or back of the rotor. And uh, yeah, it's really super annoying and it sucks. But we did find 
a couple of uh, machine screws. I put one in so far here, and lucky, lucky us, we they were the correct size and thread pitch. <laughs> so just happened to have some of those laying around, which is good. And I was able to take this little tiny screwdriver and stick it right through the hole of this uh, the hub and tighten it up. And then, then I just kind of took some needle nose and kind of bent these back into place. They were kind of bent out a little bit. Yeah, so hopefully we solved that problem and on to the next. So upon further inspection, found the screw for the dust cover lodged in the rotor here. And that was coming around and making that sound and it was, you can see it was rubbing on here and then on the other side of the dust cover. Um, luckily it uh, didn't cause too much damage. So could have been a lot worse, but at least we found the culprit and we found another screw that we can lock this down with, so. All right, back again for just a second. I'll show you what we're doing now. We are gonna be replacing the master cylinder. I wanna send a shout out to Garage Built Hondas because I watch his channel all the time. He does a great job of explaining stuff. And anyway, he recommended getting these line wrenches. It's 10 millimeter for this line. And then I unplugged these two little clips here from the top of the master cylinder uh, reservoir, I guess you would call it. I got myself a little meat injector. Can also use like a turkey baster. And I just kind of used a water bottle here to capture as much of the brake fluid as we can. Uh, make sure to put down some rags as dude from Garage Belt Honda says, because this stuff will eat your paint. So I've got plenty of rags down there. I'm loosening up the lines now. Next, we'll do the bolts on booster here. Pull this thing free and uh, then bench bleed the new one and reinstall and then bleed all the brakes. Okay, as you can see, the brake booster here is got some damage from years leaking, basically. Uh, we got it removed. This has got a, a 12 millimeter nut and lock washer on it to remove the um, master cylinder. So we got that done. Um, but yeah, as you can see, been leaking for a good minute. Seen better days. About to install the new one, I bench bleed it. Guys, I can't tell you, it really is the little things. I can't tell you how happy I am with this. New alternator, I mean, not psh, alternator, new uh, distributor, looking all fresh and minty. New master cylinder, look at that. So much better, big difference. I love it, I love it. We need more of this in here. It's coming, slowly but surely. I forgot to mention, so we got the master cylinder installed. The next step is to bleed the brakes, and that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use uh, my vacuum bleeder kit and see how that goes. Again, this is my first time doing all this kind of stuff. It's pretty cool. I had no idea it was so easy too. I mean, famous last words, but uh, yeah. I'm liking how it's going so far. Got our line wrench and Blake brake bleeder, Blake brake brake, I can't even talk right now. Brake bleeder kit all put together. Let's uh, see what she do. All right, as you can see, we got bubbles. We're doing the damn thing. He said not to go below 10, so I'm gonna pump it up real quick. You wanna hold this? Papa Smurf's helping me. He's my trusty assistant today. The one guy went up to 25. Some guys say go to 20. I mean, I guess it's all a matter of preference. We need to go and check the level now and see how much fluid we're actually uh, sucking out of the system there. So I'm going to tighten this back up and we're going to check that. It's kind of hard to do with just two hands, but here we go. Tighten her up. Oh yeah, she dropped a bit, it looks like. Quite a bit. I think we're right at the minimum mark, so just in time. All right, back at it. We're gonna try round two. And you'll notice that we're starting with the uh, furthest cylinder from the master cylinder, the furthest uh, uh, brake caliper system, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, most mechanics will say to start there. Garage built Honda says to start at the drivers for this car, then the passenger rear, and then the passenger driver, I mean the driver rear, and then the uh, passenger front. But we're gonna try it from the uh, passenger rear, and then the driver rear, and then the passenger front, and then driver front, just cause that makes the most sense in order of uh, distance from the master cylinder. In this next clip, we're gonna be starting the uh, restoration process of the valve cover. Now, I think that that's a main focal point as soon as you open the hood, I mean, you have this massive uh, valve cover. It's a dual overhead cam engine. I mean, it's a big square just right in front of your face. And if that's not in good condition, I think it just kind of lets the whole bay down. I just think it's, it's, it should be, it's, it's a focal point and it should be um, in pristine condition. You should 
do what you can to clean that up if it's not. So that's what I did. I ordered the um, BHT uh, wrinkle black, so get the wrinkle black finish, the factory finish. I decided I didn't want to uh, shave the lettering off, you know, like they do with the, you know, the sandpaper and make it brushed finish. I'm still debating on that. I, I don't think I'm gonna though. I like the stealthy look. It looked really good. I purchased a uh, spark plug wire cover from Dual or whatever the brand name is off of Amazon. It's just a black aluminum metal cover, you know, uh, and I think it looks great. I also took the time to uh, take the little grommets and I sprayed them wrinkled black and then I had uh, ordered from Pol Pro Bolt. I think it is ProBoltUSA.com. I think it is the uh, little acorn nuts. I ordered those in black. Just it's the little touches, you know. I think that uh, go a long way, and you'll see that in um, in the clip. Uh, I was really surprised at how well the paint stripper I ordered from Amazon was. I think it's called Smart Strip. How 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 good that worked. How effective it was. I literally coated it twice. Took it to the pressure washer twice, and then just kind of scraped out the little tiny bits that were left over with an Exacto knife. And uh, yeah, um, turned out great. I couldn't be happier with it. I mean, I'm, I'm really happy with the way that turned out. And you'll see that in at least the beginning part of this clip. Um, and then uh, go from there. On to the next project. We are restoring this sow cover for my B16 engine and my CRX. I'm just, I'm using some Easy Off to clean it, clean all the gunk and oil and stuff off of it, off the backside, even though it doesn't really need to be cleaned, I don't think, but uh, <clears throat> might help take some, some guesswork out of the painting process and, and, and making sure that nothing bubbles up when I, in the finish, when we do paint it. And we're gonna do the stock wrinkle black. What I did was I got some paint remover paint stripper called smart strip it's got it off of amazon and i got these brushes off of amazon matter of fact i got the easy off off of amazon i'll put links in the description if i think about it and i'm just using these uh, little nylon brushes to agitate it i, I don't want to use a wire brush just in case one of the wires breaks off on the inside there and i don't want that inside my engine so just some nylon ones and just kind of lightly agitate the dirt and whatever else and then like i said this is like a one inch chip brush and i'm just brushing brushing this stuff on there we'll uh we'll let you know how it worked out okay guys i neglected to film the taping off process and getting all the paint prep work done also what the valve cover looked like after two rounds of paint stripper and pressure washing and etc but i will provide some pictures that are very similar to the outcome i achieved there was a little bit of residue in some of the tight crevices and stuff but i just kind of took my razor razor knife rather just kind of dug into the little crevasses and whatnot to get it to be what i wanted this is vht wrinkle plus did the three coats as it suggested at horizontal vertical and diagonal three coats yeah i you know it, it achieved kind of the look that i was looking for the texture though mm, so far it's only been about uh three or four hours i'm gonna say the texture could be a little leaves a little bit to be desired the factory finish was a bit rougher and i like that more abrasive kind of finish that's kind of what i was going for the look is the same though so now also to, to note i did use a heat gun for those that are wondering it doesn't tend to really work especially i live in the seattle area so you know it was about 60 degrees today uh, at best it actually snowed today in april believe it or not the third day in a row um yeah it was very cold today i brought the brought this in the house almost immediately and then just uh kind of worked it with a heat gun and this is the finish that i got and i'm, I'm actually, actually happy with it i'm satisfied i'm debating on whether or not just to leave it stealth out stealth out in black i really like it the spark plug cover i bought was also black and when you put this on there, it is just money, man. It looks so good. I like the stealthy look. So I'm really debating on whether or not to leave it like this or to sand the letters off like most people do. I'll probably end up doing that because I want a more factory finish. I just think it looks so clean. I really like what's going on. I also did the intake. So yeah, a little bit messier. But if you saw the intake before... Um, it just wasn't very attractive. It was just an old piece of crap intake that they had on there. And I think this has breathed some new life into what was there. 
I put this collar here, which is basically just a coupler. Lubed it up real good to get it on there. It's very hard to get right to this position. Got it on there. That is so that the battery doesn't short out on it. And I do plan on relocating the battery to the hatch. But until I do, that'll keep it from shorting out, which is good. And it looks all stealthy and black just the way I want it to. And this is really nice too. It's going to complement it very nicely. I can't wait to see it on the car. So just a little update for you guys. I wish I would have taken some pictures, but I do have examples of what it looked like in the interim because a lot of people have done this and I have achieved similar results. So I'll show some screenshots of what that looks like. And just know that that's exactly what I achieved as well. Okay, the next clip, as it says, part two of the uh, rear parcel shelf rear cargo cover, whatever you want to call it, Resto, uh, working on that. Uh, I don't really know what to say about it. I think it's all pretty much in the video, um, but uh, my dog is whining and he's about to... Oh! Okay, in the next clip, uh, we're part two of the rear parcel shelf uh, cargo area resto and I think in this one I'm uh, using my lint shaver and kind of showing the results of that which are very pleasing I mean it made a huge difference uh, still let down by the little cigarette burn that I found um, I still haven't decided what I'm gonna do with that I think ultimately what I'm gonna do is recarpet the whole thing my OCD won't let that go and also even though the piano hinges worked out stellar I wasn't able to really uh, get them completely covered with the carpet because it has now has that seam there I'm sure that there's a There's a way to do that, but I'm not a carpet expert. So I'm going to probably just order all new carpet and, and Redo the whole thing It's probably what I'm gonna end up doing Because like I said my OCD just can't handle it. I don't want to see the piano hinge I just want it to be a piano hinge and do its job. You know what I'm saying? Be seen, be like not even heard or seen, just do your job, okay? If I notice you, you're not doing your job. Anyway, so there's that, and then the cigarette burn, man, I kinda just lets the whole thing down, even though it does look a thousand percent better. To be continued, I don't think we're done with this. Uh, I think I wanna just bring it up to another level, a higher class. And you'll see that in, in my future plans that I'm not gonna talk about right now, but, uh, it's coming it's coming there's more stuff more surprises and knowing me there's gonna always be more surprises but what can I say okay today I decided to work on the back uh, storage unit uh, kind of rebuilding some structure here these were sagging really bad because it was just nothing here holding it up I added this little support bar in the center just to kind of give it some structure and then I added this leg well then this started to flop over like a little elf ear and this one here and it just looked really bad so I decided to make two more legs and I just made it out of this uh it's just back strap material you know it's got a bunch of holes in it if you've ever installed stereos or you're an installer you know exactly what I'm talking about and I use this because it's just really easy easy to form and I just bend it back and forth break it where I want it and then form it how I want it and then I used some of this uh, foam it's like a sticky pad foam that I got it's about an eighth of an inch thick I got off of Amazon uh, wrap that around and that sticky stuff it doesn't really stick all that well so I use my trusty CA glue with a uh, bit of activator so that it cures instantly unfortunately it cures all over your fingers too it seems to if you're me anyway you're really clumsy but either way Got that done. Say hello to the little puppy. Hi, puppy. Anyway, back to our regular scheduled program. So yeah, now it has a little bit of structure and it'll actually kind of support the lid, which is fine. I don't plan on, you know, putting a hell of weight on it, you know. I'm thinking about, you know, maybe building up these edges with uh, either ABS or fiberglass. Something form-fitting that will fit around the amps. Since it's such a shallow area and I like where the amps are, I'm going to keep them there and I'll, I'll add my processors in the center, like I said in a previous video. But I, I, you know, I'm just taking my time with it. I'm not in a hurry to get this project done. And I think that's what I'm going to use to kind of support it around the edges. That way it'll have some more stability if I do want to stack some stuff on it and pack, you know, pack the car down. And, you know, what if I want to take a road trip, you know, this is kind of the things I'm thinking of. So that's where we are right now. The top did turn out pretty good. I think I showed a little clip of that in a previous clip, but let's place that on there. Um, 
So yeah, I'll give you an idea. I mean, obviously you've probably seen one of these if you're in, in, in the CRXs, you know exactly what you're looking at. Again, too bad about the little cigarette burn there. I am gonna probably reupholster this with carpet in the future because my OCD does not like that at all. And this latch doesn't really work anymore because there's not enough support for this to hold up for it to actually latch. So it kind of just sink, sinks down a little bit. So again, maybe more support in the future is in order. Um, one of the things, I'm not gonna use this locking mechanism. I'm not gonna lock this ever. It was never really that secure anyway. I mean, this plastic, really, like if a thief wanted to get in there or if someone wanted to get in there, they would just bust that and get in there. So um, really, that's just for looks anymore. I mean, it's just, it's going to stay and it's not going to rattle, I don't think. So I'm fine with that. And if it does, then we'll address that in at a later date. So far, so good. I almost can't wait till next weekend. Get into the folks' house so we can finish some of the projects. Sneak peek. Anyway, yeah, I love that. All right. Hey, I'm back again. Just one more time. Well, two more times I gotta interrupt this video, but this will be second of the last time I interrupt. Wanna talk about what we're doing in this next video, with uh, this next clip, which is uh, the cam seal. And now this one was very satisfying for me because I finally got to close the chapter on the leaky disaster I had going on under the hood. I mean, it was just, it was bad. And you'll see just how bad it was. I can't believe it. It was like there wasn't even a seal there. It was terrible, but so satisfying to see the finished product and to see that it wasn't leaking. And we, we took it for a test drive after that and um, at the end, spoiler alert, and, and it, it, no more leaks, man. Yeah. Anyway, so that's what this next clip is. Okay guys, we're out here. We're gonna replace this uh, cam seal right now. Um, because I suspect it's leaking along with this, the gaskets and the VTEC cylinder. But cam seal first. Uh, gonna remove these 10 millimeters and all of these 12 millimeters all the way down the rail here to gain access here. Then we'll be putting in our Skunk 2 cam seal right there. So stay tuned. I'm not gonna videotape the process. It's pretty simple. There's other tutorials out there. Shout out to Honda Street Garage because thanks to big ups to Mark at Honda Street Garage. Okay, we're about the halfway mark right now. Got all the bolts removed. One thing to note about these rails is they have a little arrow and that points towards the timing belt side of the engine or towards cylinder number one. Um, this whole cap comes off here. Sorry, <clears throat> get you in focus here. And I just lightly pried up on this with a screwdriver, just barely was able to move it. Now, maybe that's not a good sign. Maybe it is. But yeah, so that's where we're at right now. So here's the underside. I don't know if you can see that in there, but that's basically the gasket material that was on our AM seal here. It was basically non-existent. So yeah, of course it's leaking all over the place. Good thing we're in here to change it. Okay, here we are with the old cam seal, P30. How much do you want to make a bet? This is the original cam seal. Look at that, look at that, look at that, look at, look at, look at, look at that. There's nothing left. Take a look over here. Look at all that crap came off of there. It's just worn out and completely. It's no wonder it was dumping oil everywhere. Pair this to our new hotness. Big difference. And it's going to look a lot better too. Okay, guys, wrapped up the cam seal. It's done. Well, as done as it's going to get. Uh, I did put a little bit of... Uh, Honda Bond around the cam seal um, before I put it in there. According to Mark from Honda Street Garage, that's okay. And I'm gonna take his word for it since he's done this a few times. Uh, there is a big debate about that, but I think it's perfectly fine, especially if you don't just, you know, really spooge it up with a whole bunch, you know. And I like the added insurance, so that's why I did it. All these are torqued down, seven and a half foot pounds and 20 foot pounds for the 12s, 10 and 12 millimeters. So yeah. And then next up, we're gonna do the VTEC solenoid. VTEC solenoid time. That's these three 10 millimeters, or the, I think this is called the spool valve, whatever you want to call it, the solenoid, whatever. <laughs> I'm gonna sound retarded right here. Anyway, I couldn't get this bad boy off and uh, it looks kind of brittle, so I didn't want to mess with it. I'm gonna leave, just leave it connected. But then, then I did get a hold of this guy. It was kind of like pinched in between the hose here, just kind of, anyway. Anyway, I got a new one uh, with the Skunk 2 unit. And uh, yeah, so. There you go. There's also three bolts down here, 310 mil as well. All right. Right, so I had no idea, but this is actually a 22 millimeter deep socket. What you're gonna need for that? Ridiculous, I know. I thought it was a 17 just by looking at it, but no way. 22. Okay, as discussed, I got that 22 loosened up, as you can see. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah. Then we got the top popped off here. Okay, this last random clip is just to explain. <laughs> Real quick, 
I know that I don't have the right gasket here. The one I pulled out is that little squarish one. It's got like more of a rectangular shape almost and it's got the screen in it. I know, I know, I don't have the right one. And I'm holding it up there and I'm like, old gasket, new gasket. I'm not an idiot. I know it's not the right one. I knew it was, but I was knee deep in it by then. And uh, I had to make something happen so that I can make my car run because I wanted to enjoy my car. I wanted to, you know, drive around. I look forward to driving this thing all the time. I have a brand new Accord and I would actually, if any given day, if the sun's out, I would rather, I hate to say it, I, most days I would rather take the CRX out than drive my Accord. Uh, yeah, I, I can't believe I said that. True, it's a true story. And I have a lot invested in that Accord. Oh my God. Stuff I haven't even uh, posted on here yet. Uh, you guys still don't know about it, but anyway. Uh, where was I? What was I even talking about? Oh, yeah, the gasket. Uh, yeah, I know the gasket's not the red one. But, but, a little dab of Honda Bond. Let's see where this is going. Honda Bond, everything. Uh, got diarrhea? Honda Bond. Solve that problem. Seal it right off. Anyway, a little dab of Honda Bond to hold it in place, and I was able to finagle it to get it to the shape that I wanted. I just kind of, you know, stretched it just ever so slightly. Wow. Doesn't leak. It works. Am I going to order the right gasket and redo it? Yes. Am I going to do that right this minute? No. No, no. There's that. And we got our new gasket and the old one. Look at how flat that old one is. Probably also leaking, so time to replace it. And there it is, removed. Unfortunately, our awesome cam, set, uh, cam seal here has to be covered up when that coat goes back on, the VTX solenoid. It's just a good looking piece. It's too bad you have to cover it up, but hey, we know it's there. We know it's new. We know it's not gonna leak. Well, hopefully.